Welcome to Center for Online Education, UPRTU. As we are dealing with the important topic, statistical investigation, today we are going to see that what is census, what is sampling, and what is the use of statistical investigation in the research process. Now, here we are majorly concerned with the census and sampling. So, the first point which comes into mind is that what is a statistical unit? As you all know that a statistical unit is a unit of observation of measurement for which data are collected and derived. Means if you have got a sample size of 150, each and every individual is your sample unit. So here the data collected and derived is what we are going to have in our sample unit. Now, what are the methods of investigation? In the part 1, I have told you that how you are going to carry your investigation process. Go and visit that video. Now, here, the first thing is this, that you have got a fair testing. Fair testing says that a person must have a proper knowledge about the investigation process. He should not manipulate the data. Whatever data he is getting, he should use that data for his study. Second one is identifying and classifying. Means whenever you have got the data, what type of data you have collected? It is primary data or it is secondary data. It depends upon you. So whatever data you are getting, it must be identified and classified in sections. Then you have got a modeling. Modeling process is very important because in a model process, we frame a certain activity and on that specific frame, we used to work in our statistics. So, modeling process is also very important when we are going to do the investigation because it is also a method of investigation. So, first is fair testing. You must properly fair test all the data, relevant data, then identifying and classifying the data in a relevant manner. The third one is the modeling. Then pattern seeking. Pattern seeking means there is a certain pattern which works over here. There is graph, the chart. You have to see the pattern. If the pattern is positive, you are going to say that it is a simple positive pattern. If the pattern is negative, you are going to say that it is a negative pattern. So you must have to follow a pattern process for your investigation because this pattern process is very important to define your study. Then the last one is researching. Researching means sometimes the study has been done in the previous. In the past, the work has been done. But now you are going to do the same work with a different angle, different perception. So here, the researching is very important because sometimes we have to prove the reliability and accuracy of that past study. So for that, we are going to do the researching process, right? So these are the methods by which we are going to do our statistical investigation. Now, how you are going to say that what is a research process? So research process is a process by which we are going to get our study done. So the first stage of research process is focusing and planning. Means first of all, we have to define that what are the areas in which we are going to do our research. So we are going to search the area of our research. So focus is very important that this is the area in which we are going to do our research. And on that focus, we have to plan that what are the things which we are needed for our research. So proper planning is also being needed here. So then the first stage, you have to focus your study and you have to plan that how you are going to conduct your study. Then in the second stage, you are going to sourcing your information. That from which source you are going to get your information. Whether the source is primary or whether the source is secondary. It depends upon you. If it is in the raw data, it is a primary source. And if it is a published data, it is a secondary source. Right? So sourcing information is very important from where you are going to get your information. In the stage 3, you are going to do your analysis. Analysis means using different statistical tools for interpreting your data. So here the data has been received and now you are going to do the analysis. The analysis can be done by the help of different statistical tools, whether it is a 
parametric tool or non parametric tool it depends upon your study however whatever you have planned over here if you have planned a parametric study or a study which is being based on assumptions you are going to put parametric test if there is no assumptions you have placed you are going to do a non parametric test over here then the last stage that is known as reporting reporting says that you have to report each and everything in your study in the area of work which you are doing that is by suggestion discussion and conclusion so first you have to discuss on the basis of your analysis you have to discuss then you have to conclude and after that you have you are going to give the suggestion this is the order which you have to take into consideration so after analysis what you are going to do you are going to make a discussion that this is the study on which we are working this is the discussion which has been come after the analysis this has been received and on this discussion on these interpretations we have concluded this and on the basis of these conclusions we have made this suggestions for the future study now the next thing is census as you all know that whenever we are going to do statistical investigation the two things comes into our mind the first thing is this that whether our investigation should be based on census or whether our investigation is based on the sampling so what is census a well organized procedure of gathering recording and analyzing information regarding the member of the population is called a census means here each and every individual is taken into consideration and data of each and every individual is being considered over here now it is an official and complete count of the universe wherein each and every unit of the universe is included in the collection of the data here universe states for your sample if you are going to do a study in the area of prayagraj so each and every individual who is living in prayagraj is your sample unit if you are working in uttar pradesh each and every person residing in uttar pradesh is your sample so whenever you are going to take the census method each and every individual is your sample unit then what is sampling sampling is defined as the process in which the fraction of the population so selected to represent the characteristics of the larger group means here we are taking certain sample and we assume that it is a representation of a larger group this method is used for statistical testing where it is not possible to consider all members of observations as the population size is very large so sometimes in research the researcher feels that a sample size is very large as you know if you have taken prayagraj there are a lot of people more than 15 lakh people living in prayagraj so it is very difficult to go to each and every one and collect the sample so here the researcher feels that from the sample you have to take the certain units and this unit is going to work as a whole so here in the sampling we used to consider that the sample size is very big the population is very big so on the part of the population we select such a sample and we used to that sample for our study now difference between census and sampling so as you know that in census each and every individual is been considered while in sampling from the population we select certain things and we used to say that it is our sample the first thing is the meaning in census a systematic method that collects and records the data about the member of the population is called census means each and every unit is considered over here while in sampling sampling refers to a portion of population selected to represent the entire group in the characteristics means here the entire group of characteristics is being considered now enumeration in census it is a complete each and every individual if you have got 1 lakh people you have to consider each and every people while in sampling you have got partial partial means if you have got 5 lakh people you have to take 5% of it and you say that 50000 people is being our sample selection if you have got 50000 people 
you are saying that 5% you have got 500 people which is being considered over here. So like this, you have to deal with the things. Steady, each and every unit of the population is being taken considered. Each and every unit means every individual is being considered in our senses, while in sampling only a handful of unit is being considered. Handful means the people which we have selected for our sample is being taken over here. Time required. It is a time consuming process. Why? Because each and every individual has been taken over here. So it is a time consuming process while it is a fast process because whatever sample we have taken, we are going to work on that. Then it is an expensive method when it comes to cost because you have to have a lot of a, a big team for having a census while for sampling you can economically method you can directly go to the samples sample and you can collect your data then results reliable and accurate why because each and every individual is giving you data so the data is very reliable the data is very accurate while in sampling it is less reliable less accurate and the margin of error is there because it might be that your sample selection has certain errors which is being considered as uh, statistical errors, standard errors or reliability errors. Then errors not present over here while here it is depends on the population size. So when we say that there is error, so there is no error present in the census method while in sampling method is dependent upon the population size that how you have taken then approximation population is heterogeneous in nature and here population is homogeneous in nature heterogeneous in nature means there are different people who are giving their input and we are taking it but in sampling we take a same type of people and we say that it is a homogeneous type of things now here this is the difference between the census and sampling. Now we come to the consideration that why we used to take the census methods. So there are certain merits, there are certain advantages which a researcher have. So the first one is it is an intensive study. By taking into consideration each and every individual, we are going to get the best result. So it is an intensive study. It is the best study by which we can say that our study is accurate our study is reliable so census methods first advantage is this, that it is an intensive study then reliable data automatically when the sample unit is same so the reliability is accurate so reliability of the data is here then suitable choice for each and every individual you are getting the data it is a suitable choice you are getting the best result you are getting the best data and the basis of various survey. The basis of various surveys means that if you have got the sample, if you have got the sample size over here, and you have to say that this sample is from the census. So every sample which you are taking is from the census. So it is the basis for the various survey. Then demerits of census investigation. Why? Why people used to avoid census method? The first thing is the cost. It is very costly method and it is a time taking process also. You, go, you have to go to each and every individual and you have to say that this is the way you are going to take. You have to tell, you have to frame schedule, you have to frame questionnaire and according to that, the data bank is very bad. So here the cost and time, two factors which makes the census is not suitable for each and every research and then there must be a possibility of errors that a person which you are taking as a sample unit might not consider or take interest in your study. So the error comes over here. So these are the demerits of census methods. Now what are the merits of sampling method? The first one is this, it reduces the cost as in sampling it is a big population which we are taking into consideration while in sampling we used to take the small sample according to our sampling method. 
whether we have taken probability method or we have taken the non-probabilistic sampling method. So, it reduces the cost. Then, there is a greater speed because our sample size is very low, very less. So, on the basis of that, in census, we have to go to each and every individual, while in sampling, there are certain people which we have selected as per our uh, need and we used to collect the data from them. So, it is a faster way of getting the data. Then detailed information, because the sample size is low, so we are going to get the detailed information of each and every thing and our data bank is also very much reduced as compared to the census method. Then it is a practical method. It is a practical method because whenever we are selecting our sampling method, we have selected certain scientific method to collect the sample. So it is somewhat practical method and as we have used certain scientific tricks to take our sample, whether it is a probabilistic sampling method or whether it is non-probabilistic sampling method, it says that it is a practical approach and it is makes our work much easier. So these are the merits of the sampling methods. Now if there are merits, there are demerits also. So what are the disadvantages of sampling method? The first one is careful sampling selection is very difficult because whatever you have taken into your study or objectives you have framed, the assumptions you have made. So these objectives and assumptions should properly match with the sampling method which you have taken. If you have taken assumptions for the analysis process, you have to go with the parametric test. If you have not taken any assumptions, then non-parametric test will be used. So here, carefully sample selection process must be done. Then experts are required for careful study of the universe. Means if you are taking sampling, you must have certain expert who can guide you that from where you are going to select your sample and how you are going to work on that sample, what are the analysis method you are going to take, what is the statistical tools which you are going to apply and according to that, you are going to interpret your data and conclude and suggest the things which are coming out in the findings. So the last one is if the information required is for each and every unit in the study, then it is difficult to interview each and every person in sampling method. As if we take this sampling and we apply it into census method, we apply that this whole area is saying this or have a this perception, then it is very difficult because we cannot say that this is the finding of each and every person. It depends upon the certain area because sampling has been taken from the population or universe. So we assume that whatever our sample size is, it directly represents the universe. But seeing that it is giving an accurate result what the universe is, it is not true. So here we can say that it is very difficult to interview each and every. So for census, you are going to make interview method, you are going to make a schedule and you are going to ask. While for sampling, you can use questionnaire, schedule or interview. So sampling is a faster method and it requires less cost while census is a costlier matter. It takes a lot of cost and a time taking process. So as you all know that government of India every 10 years used to have a census. Right? So, for our scientific study, for our social science study, for our different studies, humanity studies, education studies, we used to take sampling method because it is best suitable for our researcher. I hope you have understood this topic and senses and sampling. So, this is the second part of sampling investigation. For more, you have to go and visit the first part to understand that what is sampling investigation. I hope you have understood each and every point. Thank you.